You were looking at the West End Beach at Grand Isle. It was devastated by last year's hurricanes. The beach and the dunes flooded, and the levee was damaged. This is what it looked like in December before the restoration project began. The location that we're at right now, uh, about a month ago, was uh, about four to six feet of water. When you come over the levee, you'd be standing in water. So. Where you're standing here with guys who, who had water, we've been fighting water for the last few years in this area. So this is the narrow part of the island when you're coming in, as you've seen, and this was always underneath the water. This, this walkway was in the Gulf of Mexico was hitting the, the walkway. So we today we have a beach. Obviously you got to walk about 100, 150 feet to get to the water today. So the project, uh, that, that the goals that we try to accomplish, uh, I think are complete. The project is near and complete and we, we feel we got a good product. We're expecting um, the, the beach and levee uh, and dune repair that the Coastal Protection Restoration Authority has undertaken. Uh, this specific segment of beach and levee uh, was a segment that had actually been deteriorating for the last several years. Uh, it was a main concern of ours during the unprecedented hurricane season that we saw in 2020. There was actually a federal appropriation that was made back in 2018 to complete uh, the restoration of the beach and dune as well as provide some, some funding for some segmented breakwaters. Uh, the Corps of Engineers was ultimately able to complete the segment of breakwaters, which are just in the immediate area just adjacent to here in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, but their timeline for the federal government to get out here to complete the, the beach and dune restoration uh, wouldn't have been until the end of February. And so those of us at CPRA started paying close attention to this uh, here. Um, and realize that we needed to do everything we could to get out here sooner, as soon as we possibly could, to start pumping sediment in an area that was completely vulnerable and susceptible to the storm sur surges associated with the hurricanes. And so you have gone from about an additional mile and a half of beach um, during after Hurricane Zeta. The, the area between the edge of the water and the levee itself was about 10 feet and actually in zero, zero feet where the, where the breaches occurred. Uh, but now you've got 200 feet of beach, new beach that was, has been restored between the dune, the levee, and um, the water's edge. So it's providing additional protection for a special place uh, that we know as Grand Isle. So we, today we have a beach. Obviously you got to walk about 100, 150 feet to get to the water today. So. The project, uh, that, that the goals that we try to accomplish, uh, I think are complete. The project is near and complete, and we, we feel we got a good product. We pumped about 750,000 cubic yards of sand from the Gulf of Mexico, about one mile out, to the west end of the Grand Isle, um, which was a highly erosive part of Grand Isle, the narrowest beach. In the 2020 hurricane season, um, really damaged the dune here, which is the, the frontline protection for the residents that live here. Uh, so we were able to come in with our project and uh, repair the dune, um, to elevation 13 and then actually pump a beach that's about 200 foot wide, 150 to 200 foot wide. Um, so that's what you're standing on today. Grand Isle is the only inhabited barrier island across all of South Louisiana. And so, you know, tens of thousands of people come to Grand Isle every year to go fishing, go to the beach, to just to relax, get away from the, the stress and busyness of everyday life. Uh, so it's a special place. Um, but knowing that it is the only inhabited barrier island in South Louisiana, in coastal Louisiana, I mean, if you look out of your front door here, your front yard is literally the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and so part of the, the coastal master plan is to provide protection uh, to the people that call South Louisiana home. Um, but it's also to preserve the cultural heritage of South Louisiana. And the people that live and work on Grand Isle are some of these unique, most unique individuals anywhere in the world. Uh, I think their heritage here is absolutely worth preserving. Um, but this is one of the main components of what we call the sportsman's paradise. And I think that's why you've seen the CPRA throwing as much money as we possibly could, have a sense of urgency to get out here as soon as we possibly can to complete the restoration and repair of the damage that was done to the beach and levee. Well, we were born and raised here. You, you know, it's, you could take your kids go on the beach like we were raised. You could put a piece of pipe with chicken necks, catch crabs. You can throw, take a cast net, and you could catch shrimp. You throw a line, you catch, you catch speckled trout, redfish. I mean, you can't go in the water. It's there. The shrimp, you can see shrimp boats. You can see them all over. 
And uh, the peak of the season, is, it starts from April all the way to the Labor Day. And then you got you got 23 rodeos, and the granddaddy of them all is the Grand Al Topping Rodeo. And they can tell you, they got 25,000 people that come in. Yeah. And they, they enjoy, it's like Mardi Gras in New Orleans. You know, they come in, they, they want to pitch tents and all, and it's about fishing. Look, and it's just, it's it's a good atmosphere for your kids and your family. You're going to come back here at and, 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 and the 15th or Easter weekend, you're going you're gonna to be unbelievable. You're going to see the people on this beach. He said, you take a kid right now, and you put that you put a crab line out in June and July when the crabs are crawling on the beach and put a chicken net and he could listen the grandparents are taking their grandkids because that's what they did and, and, and they're coming in it's amazing it's amazing just to remember to catch the crabs and you know and the shrimp and all of the seafood in this golf right here it's right here in your backyard and like, you, you know like you said you got a subdivision with the virus you all look at you got your kids you're coming in the mama's fighting the daddy's fighting because of the kids let's get the hell out instead of going to florida they came here and they were spread out on the beach and the virus we stayed memorial weekend like you said it was unbelievable. You know, we had a great summer because people got away, and it was it was beautiful. You know, I was born and raised in Grand Isle. My whole family was born and raised. Uh, it's got a special place in my heart for myself and my family. Uh, uh, actually, I make a living off the land off of Grand Isle as a commercial fisherman, and it just it's 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 home for us and a lot of other people. And uh, that's why we work so hard with myself, the mayor, and the rest of the council to try to preserve what we got and keep these beaches. Uh, as our protection and these rocks as our protection and these levees. I mean, these levees are our first line of defense against these hurricanes that we get. And we just got to make sure that we keeping them uh, in shape and working with the Corps, the CPRA and the rest of our officials uh, hand in hand to get the funding to, to make sure we keep these levees in, in great shape. This last hurricane season, uh, we had uh, like six hurricanes we evacuated for. Uh, they finally got the rocks in place, but uh, a lot of the damage is already done from prior se uh, hurricane seasons and actually where we stand in here we was probably standing in probably close to 10 feet of water uh, before they started uh, pumping in the sand to get it back to its original uh, state with the beach. Uh, as you see if you look out you can see where uh, it's kind of making like a horseshoe where the, the sediment's already filling in on its own with these rocks and uh, this end was never had rocks and in the middle of the island we had them and we never ever had to touch them. Uh, the, the sand because it, it, it worked itself with Mother Nature and filled in it itself and now we got this five segments on this end and uh, and it's starting already and I think it's going to do a lot of good for this end of the island but now we need to work towards getting with the federal government to finish the rocks in the middle of the island. Uh, we need uh, to finish all the way uh, to protect the rest of the island. Uh, like the mayor was saying earlier, uh, next hurricane season you're going to see where these rocks stop uh, we're going to have these storms come in and you're going to see where it's going to start already eating up where the rocks stop. Put the rocks, they're going to work. Uh, it's proven in the middle of the island. It's already starting to prove itself here in only a, a short few months. The first thing we had to do was, was find sand. Um, obviously, uh, the sand, sand is a precious resource in Louisiana. Uh, many of the reasons why our coast is, is disappearing is because of lack of sediment. So beach quality sand was the priority. We were able to do some some modeling and some data collection and find a deposit of sand about a mile off offshore, and then the remaining parts and pieces is figuring out a way to get that sand to this beach. And so the engineers come in. We actually lay a template that we want to build on top of the existing elevations, the existing surveys. We compute the volumes, and then uh, once once we have that volume in mind, we're able to put together the bid package. And, uh, and, and get some bids. We were able to get some good bids and hire uh, Great Lakes Dredge and Dock, who uh, started the project uh, earlier earlier this year in December, or late, late 2020 in December, and they're wrapping up right now. So hydraulic cutter head dredge, it's a, it's a large, basically uh, the, 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 the simple, it's a, it's a floating pump, and it's got, a, it's got a cutter head on the end of it that agitates the sand. It pumps it, and it pumps it through an underwater pipeline. That pipeline came on shore right over here, uh, once the sand was pumped to the beach, you saw earth moving equipment move that sand around and build what you see here that we're standing on today. I, having visited the site, um, you know, at the, at the end of uh, hurricane season, pre-construction, um, it was in pretty bad shape. I mean, this area, uh, we were out here, we had several meetings. Uh, four tropical events impacted this site um, before we were able to start construction. So we bid the project and then four tropical events. Uh, hit us. And so we were able to come here, 
look at the damage, assess what needed to be changed. But to me, it's, it's just rewarding to see, uh, first of all, the condition it was in before, and um, not just from a recreational area uh, standpoint, but from a, from a protection standpoint, what we have today, uh, we're very pleased. So the Coastal Master Plan is our 50-year, 50, $50 billion plan that aims to restore and protect coastal Louisiana. So it aims to, uh, since the 1930s, we've lost approximately 2,000 square miles of land from a variety of factors from oil and gas exploration, saltwater intrusion, sea level rise, lack of sediment that used to be introduced through the Atchafalaya and Mississippi rivers. So it is our overall comprehensive plan that calls for specific projects to mitigate for the land loss and the susceptibility of hurricanes across coastal Louisiana. And so since 2007, we have secured over $20 billion to implement hurricane protection and coastal restoration projects across the coastal zone. Uh, we have created over 300 miles of new levees, over 60 miles of barrier islands, uh, and we don't plan on stopping there. If you look over the next four years, the projects that we will be um, going to construction over the next four years will actually create more land in South Louisiana than we expect to lose. And so an incredible amount of progress is being made uh, in addressing the, the overall deterioration of our coast. Um, which is such a special place, not only for the people that call Louisiana home, but it's a special place for the Gulf Coast, as well as a huge economic engine for our country. 90% of the nation's oil and gas is serviced out of coastal Louisiana, out of Port Fouchon. If you look at the fisheries, the commercial fisheries, it's one or two ranked nationally, um, depending on what year you're looking at. If you look at the commerce that flows up and down the Mississippi River, it is huge economic engine for the nation as a whole, and it's absolutely worth preserving and worth the intention of the entire nation. All of us are you know, thrilled to death because in the meantime, what it means to us, that people see that we're saving grain. Now every, every grain, every time we, we talk to each other, what's next, what's next? We work together as a team, go to Washington. And he, he called me last week when we go to Washington and said we can't go again because we, we lobby our own self. We put 5000 in a little budget between the levy board and the town and we go. And we testify, bring a booklet. So the meaning, the meaning of this is people love this place. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, these guys, uh, Great Lake did a, a great job. Uh, from what you would have came out here and seen a few months back, uh, you wouldn't believe what you're seeing now. Uh, like I said, we were standing, we were standing where they had 10 feet of water, uh, got a beautiful 200 feet of beach, uh, getting it ready for the season. We got summer coming right on our door. Uh, get it ready for the, uh, the residents, uh, the tourists to come in and enjoy this beautiful beach. I could not be more pumped up. I could not be more pleased with what I see. I think the progress that has been made in such a short amount of time in addressing the susceptibility of Grand Isle, addressing some of the damage that was done to this levee. Uh, this, this levee actually was breached in several places during Hurricane Zeta. And for us to get out here uh, as soon as we, as we did and to have over close to a, a mile and a half of new beach, new dune, new levee, um, and an additional 200 feet of beach, um, I think has exceeded my wildest expectations. How can people get more information? So you can go to our website, coastal.la.gov. Uh, there will be a, a link to where you can actually click on the link, which will take you to uh, this specific project uh, that gets into a little bit more specifics, more technical aspects of the project, but coastal.la.gov.